Greetings and salutations my friend. I'm working on a longer video this week that will be ready this Sunday. But in the meantime, I came across this video by a YouTuber named Man vs Street. The name of the video is When Can Kids Transition? I'd recommend watching the whole thing, so I left a link to the video in the description. But there's one particular part of the video that really caught my attention. Gender affirming care for young people has to do with, um, you know, puberty blockers and all those kinds of things which are incredibly reversible. They don't necessarily mean, oh, I'm going to chop your pants off. If you allow them to go through puberty, their voice is going to drop and all those kinds of things and that allows them to not be cis passing, which can be detrimental to their safety. Puberty blockers are completely reversible. I'm not a doctor, obviously. <laughs> I've heard that they're not reversible, that it does cause serious and permanent changes. It, it is reversible. I've known multiple people to reverse. To I'm gonna say detransition, and I know they are happy with that. Okay, hmm. So, as a detransitioner myself, I would say there's a big difference between being able to fully reverse your transition and being happy with your detransition. Like, I would say I'm happy with my detransition, I'm happy where I am today, but I can never reverse what has been done to me or Maybe I should say what I have done to myself. It is not possible for me to return to the man I was before I transitioned. And I do think that different rules apply, whether you've only been on uh, puberty blockers or hormones, or if you've done surgery. So, long story short, when it comes to puberty blockers, most of its effects are reversible. But, you are at a higher risk of becoming infertile, and if you go from, let, let's say if you're transitioning from uh, male to female, if you go on puberty blockers and then on estrogen, you might never be able to develop ability to orgasm. Because going through your natural puberty is essential for the development of your sexuality and the development of your brain. And no, synthetic hormones cannot replace that. Hormones associated with the opposite sex, it's not natural for your body to have high level of those hormones. And they will not react to those as if that was a natural thing. And I know they are happy with that. This is how deep my voice is. This is what I mean by hair loss. Um, and it just keeps getting worse, it keeps thinning, it keeps receding backward. That's what, what people understand. Nothing is irreversible. I will always have a scar even if I remove my breasts. I will never get back my original body. It's not possible. It's irreversible. And I need a... Uh, I mean, I could uh, take testosterone and stuff, um, but, you know, without the uh, physical ability to properly process it, because people don't realize that your gonads have got an integral part in regulating your body's hormones. So even if you take artificial hormones, testosterone, estrogen, either, it has a limited in impact and effect, so it, you are pretty much not good with it. And I know they are happy with that. And I know they are happy with that. Second of all, this woman says that she knows several people who have detransitioned. That in and of itself, I think, is kind of worrisome. And doesn't it debunk this whole claim that detransition is super rare and that there are very, very few people who detransition? I don't think so. If you have a person who knows several people who have detransitioned, I do not think that was common in our society five or even ten years ago to know several people who have detransitioned. I certainly didn't. Well, some years ago, I was at an event for trans people. It was maybe 20 something, maybe max 30 of us. And I know of four people who attended that event that have detransitioned. Now, I don't know how that relates to the overall ratio of detransition because there's so much information and uh, research and statistics that are lacking. But based on that small group, there was approximately a 10% detransition rate. Another research that I talked about in one of my early videos was that uh, the detransition rate might be all the way up to 30%. We don't exactly know what the detransition rate is, but I would say that 10% sounds reasonable. And especially considering that on average a person starts regretting their transition after approximately 7-8 years. Can you be really sure that you will never ever regret it after like one year or two? 
Another important thing to think about is exactly what group was she talking about? Was she talking about the transitioners or the existers? The existers are a group of trans people who go back to living as their original gender, but they never went on hormones, so they only lived as the opposite sex on a social level. From what I've seen, and from all the testimonies of the people I talk to, I think that the existers make up a very huge portion of people who regret their transition. Or maybe in this case, people who never truly, truly started the transition other than on the social level. Is she talking about those people or is she talking about the people who have been on hormones? Because that makes a huge difference. Of course you're gonna be happy with your detransition if you've never been on hormones or if you're only been on puberty blockers for a short period of time. But the point still stands that the very fact that one person knows several people who regretted that decision is something we should be concerned about and take seriously. I will see you in a much longer video in just two days, so till then, have an amazing weekend. Ciao!